Hello everyone, it's Helen from Journaling Planet. A while back I posted a flip through of my autumn journal. I will post that link below if you missed it. And when I did that, I realised that I'd left out a crucial part of my autumn experience. So I'm going to make a mini zine to put into that journal retrospectively. Yes, you can do that. You can do anything you want with your journals. And I'm going to do it using one sheet of paper. For those of you who have never made one of these before, they are very straightforward. Uh, you simply fold the paper in half, fold it in half again, fold it in half again. Obviously, I've used my bone folder when I've been doing this. Then you unfold it all. You should have all that in sort of eight pieces. And then you fold it in half. And this is the bit that people get a bit confused about. But you just cut this fold to the middle. I already screwed this up once, so I had to cut sort the video, but you fold it in half, <laughs> you go that way with it, and then it turns into this little booklet. So that's the bit I screwed up on the first part, I had to try again. So it is very straightforward, even though I'm not making it seem so. Once you've made your cut, you fold it this way, push, and then you fold. So I'm going to draw my zine. Whilst I'm doing that, I'm going to tell you the story of... Uh, what I missed out of my journal. I'm going to speed up the drawing process and I'm going to do a voiceover over the top of it. And at the end, I'll show you the, the zine and you can see how I filtered a longer story into a short zine format with all the key points there for me to remember. First thing I'm going to do before that, however, is I'm going to number my pages so that I know when I have it lying flat what sequence each of the drawings needs to come in. It's a really crucial point and if you miss it, it can get very difficult when you've got this piece of paper lying flat. Okay, off we go. About 30 years ago, when I was 11 years old, I used to have a little shoebox where I kept all the things that I found on nature walks, mainly seashells and pebbles. My best friend had something similar. And her neighbour had a huge container of pebbles sitting outside her house. And she would let us go through the container and look at all the different pebbles and stones. We were really cool kids, I should point out at this point. Very, very popular. Only did the coolest things. One day, the neighbour allowed us to choose one of the pebbles to take home with us and put in our shoebox museums. And I chose what I thought was a stone, but the neighbour informed me was in fact a perfectly spherical piece of sea glass, blue in colour, that had been turned over and over by the ocean and rounded off until it was perfectly smooth. I thought this was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen in my life. And it went straight into my shoebox museum and I used to look at it on a regular basis. Until my parents moved house and then my mother unwittingly threw my shoebox museum in the bin, wondering what on earth her daughter was doing with a box of stones in her bedroom. Wasn't there enough mess without this? It wasn't until after we moved that I realised what had happened to my shoebox museum. And the thing that I was most upset about is it meant that my beloved piece of sea glass had been thrown in the bin. I moved in my adult life to live near the ocean and I have scoured every single beach I've ever walked along ever since that day for another piece of sea glass just like that one. I have never found one until there was a great storm where I live. Storm Babette, and it churned the sea and it dredged up all kinds of things from the seabed. It wasn't just beautiful things, there were parts of old cars, there was even a bathtub that was pulled up. The storm actually broke the chain on a nearby buoy and dredged that up, and that was made of concrete. But when I was beachcombing, one day after the storm, 
After 30 years, I found a perfectly spherical piece of blue sea glass. Now, under ordinary circumstances, this would have felt very important indeed anyway. But in recent times, as many of you know, I've lost my husband to cancer. And there was something about having this piece of sea glass in my hand that made me think about how things can come back to us in ways we might not expect. Now, I know objectively that that cannot be the same piece of sea glass that my mother threw out 30 years ago. But in a weird way, it feels as though that little treasure was returned to me, perhaps in a slightly different form. And so it gave me an enormous sense of peace to think about the idea that things can return to us, maybe even people, in ways we wouldn't ordinarily expect. Okay, so beefed up the lettering a little bit, and then we've got the story of the sea glass going into the bin. I looked everywhere for 30 years. That I didn't realise that was actually going to turn into a double spread, <laughs> and it works very well. But then Storm Babette returned my sea treasure. This is the worst drawing of a hand ever. And I don't care. <laughs> Having just lost my husband, it meant the world to know that lost things can come back to you. So I told you a little bit of a longer story than that, but it is possible to just take the key points and you will know when you look back at it, what it meant to you, everything that happened. All the details will still be there in your mind because they'll be sparked by the key points in the zine. I hope this has been helpful in turning a heartwarming story into a zine. Have you got any ideas for what you could do in your zine? What heartwarming story you could choose? I mean, it doesn't have to be a heartwarming story, but it's just a nice thing to think about and draw about. And look, you don't even have to be an amazing artist. You can just draw like a child would. It's all fine. I hope this video has been inspiring. I look forward to seeing any comments and I'll see you next time.